All right, so we're going to go to our second topic today, which is match types. And Elizabeth has a very strong position on this. So we're going to be talking about exact phrase and broad. Hit me with your position. There is no sacred cow when it comes to match types. They all have their place. So what do you mean by that? You, I, I shouldn't just spend 80% of my budget on exact match? Mm -mm. I'm going to caveat that with saying I concede that exact match sponsored product targeting is the best like match type and strategy and ad type for aggressive ranking strategies. I concede that. What I will say is that each match type should have its place in an account. So I do tons of audits on accounts all day long. And so when you do a lot of uh, audits on accounts, you start noticing consistency in strategy and consistency in results with specific strategies. Time and time again, every single time I have audited a brand that is only doing exact match ranking strategies. That's all they're focused on is my main keywords and exact match and we're pushing it. They have good rankings. What they are struggling with is traffic to the listing. They have good rankings. They're like, my rankings are great. I don't know what's going on. I'm struggling. And when I go into their business reports and I look in their sessions, sessions are consistently dropping. Why? Because they have good visibility, but they only have good visibility on very specific Meryl. selective search pages. So you got to go broader than that to get more traffic is what you're saying. You got to go broader. But the thing is, I also audit accounts where all they're doing is broad match strategies. It's all autos. It's all broad match. They have no strategic ranking strategies. And they forget to do negations too, don't they? And they and they do. And there's lots <laughs> of ways. But the things that all they're struggling with is market share. So they also have a problem with visibility. They also have a problem with their sales continuously declining because they're not maintaining market share because they're focused on all the broad stuff. So what we say, it's like a two pronged approach. It's like, you got to go, you got to go narrow and aggressive and you got to go deep and wide and profitable. If you keep those two things in balance. You should be golden. But if you had to pick between the two, which of the one, if you could only yeah. use one, which one would you use? Broad or exact? Can I go? I would go, I would go broad. But if you want to, if you want to cheat and say phrase, I won't blame you. I, I was going to say, I, I might go <laughs> middle of the road and go phrase there. I might only, only because of the updates with the search triggers. Otherwise, there have been a lot of updates with that. And it's like, can you even tell what your keyword targeting strat is now? It's like really hard. So what's going on with fact, that? Match types in some ways no longer matter in sponsored brand ads. It's been crazy to see that. I can't believe they've made those changes. It's making it harder. Yeah. And they're going to take more of my money. Yeah. So what do, what do people need to know about that? Every single match type inside of a sponsored brands ad now will trigger what is called like related search. Meaning, you know, so for here, if you had classic example would be like, okay, so you have like soap, right? Um, it might trigger something like body wash. It's related. It's kind of ish, sort of adjacent, but it's not what I was wanting to target with, with my soap. And so you'll, you'll end up with stuff like that. So I might've typed in soap, but I might trigger a body wash sponsored brand. All right. So they're, they're, it's almost like category targeting now. Is that kind of what you're saying? Kind of. Yeah. But it's definitely like not exact match anymore. Like you can't run nope. an exact match. Nope. And this happens in, they rolled it. It was always that way in broad match in sponsor brand ads. That always happened. So consequently, a lot of us advertisers were like, fine, I'm not even going to use broad match and sponsor brand ads. Like, forget it. I'll use phrase and exact. That's fine. And then they roll it out in an exact match. And we're like, what? And then they yeah, roll why? it out in phrase match. And I'm like, then what does it matter the what point? I put anymore? Yeah, there's like no point between the two. All right, so here we have an, an ad group set up. I've selected uh, an age of sage soap just so everybody can see what product we're working on right here. Uh, so we've got some classic old, old timey, wimey soaps, artisan type of angle here. And, and we're going to scroll down to the keyword section. So if we look at some of this, why is there such a disparity between the bidding amount on some of these keywords? And like, can I even trust this data? So for example, I'm going to add the broad, the phrase and exact on the competitor here, Dr. So Squatch Soap. Why is for whatever reason, the phrase at 46 cents but the exacts at $3 and 69 and the broad at 409. Do you have any take on that? I don't know. So people ask me all the time. <laughs> They're like, do you use, you know, do you use Amazon's recommended bidding strategy? 
and you're asking like, what's the, what's the point? Where's the discrepancy? Are so I get, I get the question, are these useful? And my answer to that is these are all over the place and often wildly off base, but it's the best data we got. Like, so, so what should I do? Test and see? I would or... say test, test and see and look at it versus what you can afford to spend. So for an example, if you came in, what's the product price? So we got an $18 soap. $18 soap. And what would be what would be the conversion rate? Somewhere around 9%. Okay. So we're looking at roughly 11 clicks. So if we say 11 times 4, we're spending $44 for one conversion. Which that, is rough. That yeah. doesn't make anywhere near sense. So unless, you say, okay. Unless I've got a big budget and I'm okay with losing more money. A lot of, next, yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. I mean, that's what? 44 divided by 11. That is 400% ACOS. Yeah. So like, how do you, I mean, so we get like these supplement brands that show up and their bids are always $5 plus. Like, why do they do that? Like, how, how can I even launch a supplement on Amazon these days? You can. We do. Um, because that's what the market is calling for and the second thing that you, you think i have this one on my desk check it out the knock nice. <laughs> there so what does that one do uh immunity immune support interesting yeah the reason why a lot of these brands can afford to do this is due to subscribe and saves because you have a more like you have a longer this gets into like the whole like customer lifetime value yeah. which is a like very all right right which is a very common thing in the advertising world, much less common to the Amazon ad world, but it's a thing, right? So it's going, okay, if I know that I have, you know, for every X amount of customers, see they have a subscribe and save on this, super, super smart. So they know someone goes, ah, I'll, I'll save a little bit. I'll get a subscribe and save. Okay. So then they'll get that continuous purchase. And the thing with subscribe and save, you know, a lot of, it's good to track it. It's good to get granular with it. An easy way that these data points will show up for you in the supplement category is in your total A costs, right? Because if you're getting those subscribe and save sales, those are trickling in. And then you have that same ad spend, that total sales is growing, which is naturally going to make a our total A cost ad spend divided by total sales. So as total sales grows with subscribe and save, I can see that reflected in my tacos. So, so if we're going to tie them, this, yeah. So we're going to tie this back into one of your earlier arguments that if you if you use Exact Match, it's really good for ranking. So like this Knox supplement, NAC supplement right here, sixty eight thousand volume. This yeah. product that ranked thirty six organically, but sponsored rank number four. Um, so you would you would argue having an exact match campaign on this would be the only way to move the needle here? No. If you want to get into tactical, it will be the most effective for aggressive ranking strategies. There's sort of like back end ways you can do this. So uh, yes, I would definitely have an exact match aggressive rank strategy running here at a search volume of say 60. Well, let's see. I'm a fan of math. This, this one's at 68,000. So we're going to say 68,000 and that's for a month. So we're going to divide it by 30. So we're looking at 2,000 searches. And, uh, and Helium is estimating 8,200 monthly keyword sales off that keyword. Okay. So that's pretty decent. We're looking at a one, I really have a higher than a 1% click through rate, but if we're just estimating a 1% click through rate, it's 25 clicks a day. And then if you multiply that times, they're probably spending, you know, some of these keywords get crazy at like $10 a day. I mean, you could be spending easily. Yeah, this, like, this keyword is going to be a $5 keyword, no doubt. For sure. And then see, so you're ending up with, so then the question is, can I afford that much ad spend or you know, point that we talked about earlier, exact match ranking strategies, layer that in with a budget cap, then you go, okay, I can afford to get, you know, maybe I'm okay with 20 clicks on this keyword. What does that budget look like? Give my cost per click. And then you have that much ad sales added to the pot of cumulative total sales. And then, you know, you can work your numbers there. So that can be helpful. Another great way on these types of keywords, crazy aggressive, you have to have a competitive product and you have to be able to convert on your competitors' pages, though. Another way is to target the listings of your top competitors. So are do the ASIN, top ASIN targeting yeah. instead of instead of a keyword targeting, do ASIN targeting. And there's no such thing as broad phrase and exact on that. You just type in the ASIN. If you have the budget, I would do if you have the budget, do all the above. 
here I'm selecting product targeting instead of keyword targeting. And if you want to get super lazy, we could just hit the category and call it a day. But yeah. what Elizabeth is saying is we need to come in and target uh, individual products. Now, if we targeted my own products, that'd be defensive. If we targeted a competitor's product, that'd be offensive. Mm -hmm. And for those that don't know, th this is where it shows up. If we scroll down, this can show up in the products related to this item section. It's very common. This can be renamed like three different things. And then there's multiple rows. So related products right here. And, and then uh, sometimes there's a, a third row as well. But we're, we're only triggering two on this particular listing. So that's yeah. one way to do it. Now, if you go back to Cerebro real quick. Let's pop sure. open that top search page you were talking about. So ignore the sponsored. See how those ones at the very top, they have that little gray sponsored. We're not interested in those guys. They've paid to be here. And those can move all the time. We're looking at the ones so that top one, the one that you purchased, that's the top ranked product. And then we might scroll down and see, okay, so what are the Cerebro next? says it's organic rank 36, but since I bought it, I think they're cheating it to the top. We'll, let's okay. confirm that. I'm going to open an incognito and go to Amazon. We'll see. We'll and see. I'm going to type in. And the search term was Knox Supplement, I think, right? Yeah, just Knox Supplement. So let's try that out. And let's that see what they come up this time. A good yeah. tip. Different result. Different result. So yeah, now they're whenever, all the way down. There it is. Yeah, whenever you're doing competitive research and you're looking specifically at product ranking, that's a good tip. Use an incognito window the way Steven does. Then your past searches are not going to skew your data points. Yeah, I got to love it though when a client reaches out and talks about their own, what they see. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what you see and others see no, maybe might not. be a little bit different. Yeah. They want to get to the top of a certain uh, keyword and, and uh, defend it to death. All right, so... You wanted to go to that top search, ignore the sponsored. What else should we be looking at? So what we're doing here, I was talking about, you know, you were talking about like grabbing specific products. That's what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to be looking at what are the top ranked products and how I said I'm going to do both. So I'm going to also run an exact aggressive exact match. But maybe if I'm capping budgets or I'm doing something or I can't afford that much ad spend, I can also get visibility through this keyword sort of in an indirect way by making sure that I appear on these competitor product pages. So I'm looking yeah, at- how would, you, how would you go about choosing them? Are, are you saying just go for whatever's ranked the highest or what would you recommend? There's two ways you can do it. One is a test and see who's so ranked highest, all. high yeah. traffic, all right? All. Okay. That's going to be really expensive. All right, so yep. if you have the test budget, try it. The other thing that we can do if we have a more limited budget might be to go through and look at these and say, who do we think we could even potentially compete against, right? So, so more maybe of a this, lasers right. like, okay, so this guy with 10,000 reviews or 15,000 reviews, probably not a good idea. Maybe hit this guy with 500. Yeah, or maybe if you have a lower price product, like maybe if you're starting out at a $15 price point, you're like, well, that 36 and 59 Although they might have higher, you know, maybe they have 60 milligram. Pay attention to it. So you're just like, who do I think I have a fighting chance to convert against? And you're looking at page one for that. Any other tips on that? Um, you can run these in a sponsored product. Use exact match targeting here. That means you're going to be targeting this direct competitor. There's maybe other strategic ways to use expanded targeting. There's some interesting stuff. But if you want to like, I want to show up on this specific product page. When you enter this in, see how those all say expanded. It's like the match types. There's that little checkbox up at the top. So if you uncheck expanded and you check exact. That'll be your exact targeting. So expanded is kind of like broad match and exact is like exact. Yeah. So Amazon will change the rules again, of course. Amazon will show you two products that on that product page and also on product pages that they deem are related to that specific product. So if we're going tailor focus, make sure we hit that exact check mark. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And you want to go to enter a list up there where it says if you want to plug in your list of ASINs. You're going to hit enter list, you exact match checkbox, drop in all those ASINs you've copied from page one, and then hit target and boom, they should be in there. Okay. And nobody has a limited budget to spend on Amazon. Nope. So if I'm an average day Joe seller, let's say I spend $10,000, $15,000 a month on PPC, how much should I be allocating to product targeting in your opinion? For us, it's not so much a cut and dry must spend X, it's more like, where are we getting the best performance? So if I'm going to test day one, maybe I have spent nothing so far, but mm -hmm. I have a $15,000 budget in mind for a product. 
where should I allocate that in your opinion? So I'm going to go back to my limited budgets argument and say, put a budget where you have enough given your cost per clicks to be able to get enough clicks to actually validate the target. So for example, if you're expecting like a 10% conversion rate, 10 clicks on average, if I have a dollar, it's going to take me $10 to at least roughly probably 12 to evaluate if I can even potentially get a conversion rate here. So think about it like that. And then I would put a budget maybe slightly above that. So say I have a good test budget, but again, my argument against running completely on cap, what if I put these in here at a dollar, but bids, and then all of a sudden this thing goes crazy and I'm getting clicks galore. Fantastic. But what I don't know if they convert yet or not. So I know yeah. we're going to use the data to make ultimate decisions, but, yeah. but like a starting day one, should I put 10% into product targeting, 20% into product targeting versus the, the keyword targeting? I would probably be fine with a 20%. 20%. Okay. You had to hand me down. All right. That's good. It's always good to pin down where you would start, right? You got to have a starting yeah. point to go. All right. So that concludes the second topic, the best match type, uh, which there is none.